Is the GPU important for video editing? Well, in this video, I'm gonna discuss the role of the GPU in a laptop or desktop computer during video editing. And then I'm gonna show you some 4K benchmarks in Premiere Pro to show you how it works and the different preferences you can set up in Premiere Pro to make sure it is most efficient. All that coming at you right now. If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser. This is where you're gonna find the best tech and tools for creative professionals. So if that sounds like your kind of place, consider subscribing and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. The first thing we're going to discuss is the role of the GPU inside of the computer. So is the GPU important for video Video editing. What does the GPU do? The GPU handles all of the graphic rendering. Now this comes with a little bit of confusion. I have a lot of graphic designers ask if they need a high performance GPU to do graphic design. The simple answer is no. When you're designing in Photoshop or Illustrator, for instance, you are not rendering graphics in motion as you would in After Effects and Premiere Pro, for instance. The GPU is responsible for smoothly displaying the high definition graphics that are displayed on your screen and or played back within the timeline of say Premiere Pro or After Effects. Some argue that you need the same GPU horsepower if you are using an external 4K Ultra HD monitor while working in Photoshop or Illustrator, but I disagree. I have never experienced a lag in design experience due to a slow GPU while designing or editing still images. Okay, now that we understand what a GPU is used for, we can discuss the importance of a GPU while video editing. If you are editing 4K footage in Premiere Pro, you have video files with a very large pixel ratio, which are either 308040 by 2160 or 496 by 2160. These are large files that take a lot of power to produce on your screen, and most CPUs become quickly overloaded by this because they are not optimized to produce the size of image that you are trying to display. So the GPU assists the CPU. The CPU fetches the request from, say, Premiere Pro, decodes the information, and then executes a message to the GPU telling it to render the video files within your timeline to be displayed smoothly on your screen during playback. The reason the GPU can handle this amount of information, of visual information that is, is due to the number of cores it contains. So here's a quick reference of the 10 series graphics processing units from NVIDIA and how many cores they have per the unit uh, associated with it. So with a lower end GPU containing around 600, 640 to 770 cores, this allows the GPU to execute what is referred to as parallel processing through a technique NVIDIA developed called CUDA cores. So rather than a CPU having six main powerful cores that attack operations one at a time, the GPU attacks many, many more computational tasks at once. More cores equals more workers. So basically the CPU is like the general contractor planning the building of a large dam and the GPU is the 750 workers all working at the same time to get the dam up in a fraction of the time it would to take the GC, the general contractor, if he tried to do it all by himself. GPUs are best used on visual tasks, which is why we see their effect so prominent in video editing. There is an awesome video uh, of really a G, like a GPU, how it works visually in action by the, the guys uh, who put on the Mythbusters. So if you look up like Mythbusters NVIDIA, definitely watch that video after you finish this because it is just super, it's super cool. Um, it's entertaining and it's also very, it, it creates a lot of clarity behind this topic. Okay, now before we dive into the tests, if you're curious about my recommendations, I have listed a few uh, models in the description below of what I think are the best laptops for 4K video editing. So if you want to go ahead and check those out, those will be listed in the description below. Now, if you do click one of those links and make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Let's jump into the tests. I'm going to use a Gigabyte Aero 15 i7 9750H processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and an RTX 2070 Max-Q. I have a 9-minute 4K Premiere Pro project uh, with talking head footage and B-roll footage. Now I'm going to have with CUDA cores optimized in Premiere Pro, I'm going to have that enabled. You can see that the 4K playback is really smooth. As the timeline begins to play, the CPU is sending a task to the GPU to render and display the 4K image on the timeline. It's handling it exceptionally. 
Okay, now I'm going to show you what happens when we switch off the GPU. As you see, the timeline nearly comes to a halt. With a CPU running at nearly full bore, it can't keep up with the task. There are too many mathematical calculations for the CPU to keep up with, something that the parallel CUDA cores in the GPU can handle with great ease. Okay, now let's turn on the CUDA cores again and do a quick render test. Now this is a 19 minute project. It has talking head, it has B-roll, and it has some motion graphics in it. It took three minutes and 25 seconds to render out the 7,240 frames with the GPU support CUDA cores turned on. Now I'm gonna turn off the CUDA cores and it takes 28 minutes and six seconds to render the entire 19 minute project with no GPU support. I also ran these same tests with my 2017 Dell XPS 15. This model has the i7-7700HQ, that's a quad core processor, 32 gigs of RAM, and the GTX 1050 graphics processing unit. To provide an example of what an entry-level GPU can accomplish regarding 4K timeline playback and rendering. With the CUDA cores turned on, the 4K playback in the timeline is smooth, but as the CPU begins to heat up, it begins to throttle. This causes the timeline to become jumpy and inconsistent. The throttle of the CPU decreases the CPU's capability to quickly send the GPU the information it needs to accomplish its tasks. As you see, the GPU becomes underutilized as the CPU starts to throttle. When we first started the playback before the CPU heated up, the GPU was bouncing around 65 to 80% utilization. But now that the CPU is throttled, it sits much lower. Okay, now let's take a look at how this system handles rendering. So we're gonna take that same 19 minute clip and we're going to do the render and it takes five minutes and 53 seconds to render out 7,240 frames with CUDA cores turned on. Now turn off the CUDA cores, have no GPU help. It takes an hour and 15 minutes to render the entire 19 minute project with no GPU support. As you can see, it's important to consider both components. It's not just about having a great GPU or a fantastic CPU. It's about complementing the CPUs really well together. So if you have any more questions about GPU's importance for video editing, definitely comment below. I'd love to answer those questions for you. And I have, like I said, those recommendations for the laptops that I think are great performing laptops for 4K video editing. Again, if you do make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. And I thank you so much when you use those links. I'm Benji Kaiser. You've been watching this episode about is GPU important? And I'll see you here on the next one.